Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from computergargar.com and in this video we will look at how to use the message box function of Excel. Now the MSG box function is one of the first things you learn when you're starting out uh, in learning VBA and it will always be a useful thing. It allows us to communicate and to interact with the user of the macro. We can display information to them, but also ask questions and capture their response, which will then determine what path the macro takes. So it's a really useful skill. And in this video, we are going to see six examples of its use. So it's perfect for any of you starting out in VBA, as we'll start from a simple message box but then develop through some examples using buttons and interacting uh, with the user. So let's get started. So let's start with just a simple message. I have a list of members on screen with new members this month on a different sheet. And if we switch into our Visual Basic editor, I have a simple macro which just copies and pastes data from one sheet to another. Now, wouldn't it be nice when this is happening if we have a MSG box, a message box function, MSG box. And when I press my spacebar, especially for those of you who are new or just starting out in VBA, fantastic to see that VBA functions have huge similarities to worksheet functions of Excel in the way that the syntax is written. Now for this first example, I just want to use the prompt. So let me put in some inverted commas and say that uh, the data has been archived. And that will do. We do not need to use these brackets, these parentheses, every time we use the MSG box function, which is something different for those who are new to this. Well, I just click away. There it is, that's fine. I can close down this editor and run this macro. I don't have a button for it at the moment, so let me just run it through here. The copy and paste macro. And it does its job, and there is my message. The data has been archived and it has been successfully moved to this other sheet. Okay, so let's take that a step further and add some additional information to our message. So now on screen, I have a list with some blank rows. And if I go into the Visual Basic Editor, I have a module called Delete Blanks with a macro that does the job of deleting those blank rows. Now at the bottom, I would like to have a message box. So let me start that up. That will display how many blank rows were deleted at the end. So for those of you who have used features like remove duplicates, find and replace, you know, these built-in Excel features like to say at the end, when they're completed, how many um, like items they replaced or how many records they deleted. Maybe we want the same here. So a variable has already been set up to uh, kind of count how many are being deleted, and it's called number deleted. Now this video is not to get involved with variables and how this works, that is for another day. We are here for the message box. So let's look at how we can now include that information. So I can just start out in the usual way. I could just say MSG box, uh, you have deleted, and I'll put a space and a close in inverted commas, and then an ampersand to concatenate onto that the number deleted information. So the variable that has stored how many we have deleted during the macro. I can then continue with my message, my string, by concatenating onto that the word rows. Notice how I'm putting the spaces in to the necessary uh, positions. 
So I'm making sure there's a space after and just preceding the variable information. After that, I'll put a comma. And you can see in this syntax at the bottom now it moves on to the buttons question. Now we're going to talk about how to use that in a moment. For now, I'm going to put in another comma to skip that. It's an optional argument. We don't have to use this. Uh, don't click on it like that. <laughs> and put that comma back in. But what I do want to use is this title argument. So I'm just going to put a simple title, just saying number deleted. Once again, an optional argument. I didn't bother in the first example. But now let's imagine I do. I've got a title as well. Now I can just click away. It performs a syntax check like you saw with my mistake a moment ago when it complained about the syntax I'd used. Now it's happy. If I close this down and run this macro so that we can see the message. Uh, delete blank rows, this one. And there it is. It does the job of deleting the blanks, but then tells me you have deleted four rows. And you can see at the top the title of the message box number deleted. Now maybe you want to write your message text over multiple lines. So I'm back with my list and the blank rows, the four blank rows in it. And if I revisit the code that we wrote in the previous example, and I've got the message box you have deleted, four rows, a comma, now, after the rows, but before that comma, the one that moves on to the buttons argument, I'm going to put another ampersand in, and then I'm going to type VBCRLF, uh, which I believe stands for you know, Visual Basic uh, Carriage Return Line Feed. But those six letters basically will start a new line in this message. So I can now put another ampersand in, and then I can type good work. That'll be a nice message. And that will appear on the second line. Now also, whilst you're in your code, you see how this is now stretching off. And it's not a, a terrible thing, but now because it's not quite fitting in the window, you may even want to start new lines within your code. Now the line continuation character in VBA is a space and then an underscore. So if I just type an underscore in here and press enter and just tab along, it allows me to start a new line. So now it's just a bit more compact and I don't have a really long line which may be harder to track. So if you have deleted X number of rows, start a new line in this statement and start a new line in the message, good work. And then I've got the same title as before. So if I close this down and run the macro, oops, wrong button again, macros, delete those blanks, we now have the words good work on a separate line. Now this is when the MSG box function really starts to get useful. When we can add buttons to it, and use them to ask a question of the user and capture their response. So we get the user to make a decision as to how the macro proceeds from this point onwards. So I have a list on screen, and if we go into the Visual Basic Editor, a macro that deletes any records that are over 500 days old. Now, before the macro really gets going and actually starts deleting those records, I would like a message box to ask the user if they're sure. Like, was this a mistake? Are you looking to delete those rows? And if they say yes, it does. And if they say no, it doesn't. So I'm going to type a if statement in here. And then I'm going to use the message box function to capture their response. That is the condition for this if statement. So I'm going to start off with our message. Uh, do you want to delete the records over 500 days old? There's my message, there's my prompt. And then after that, I'll put in the 
comma. So at this point, it would typically start to prompt me for some buttons that I'd like to use. But you notice this time it doesn't, unlike the previous examples. And that's because now I'm not in a statement on its own line. I'm within this if structure. So I need the brackets, the parentheses for the MSG box this time. I didn't bother previously as it was a statement on its own line. Now it's necessary and you can see how the VBA uh, editor reacts so I can see I'm on the right track. Now I can see I'm in the buttons argument and if I just remove that comma and put it back in again it will initialize this list of the different types of buttons we can use. Now in this example I want yes no buttons so if I scroll down this list to find VB yes no I could alternatively just type that in I just double click it here VB yes no buttons please comma what's your title let's put in a title are you sure let's make that a capital A and then I'll close off that parentheses because I don't want the help file or context right now and I'll continue with the if statement so I'll put the word then and I'll start my new line let's write end if in before I forget I always like to end a construct before I start filling in the middle however to be fair in this example in the middle um, or oh, I just realized I haven't put the actual end of the uh, the condition in sorry if the message box so that displays the message box with the yes no buttons but I haven't actually tested it yet I haven't put a logical test in is equal to VB no so did the user say no show the message box capture their response is it equal to no did they say no and then I can put an um, exit sub as the response to that if they said no I bought the macro get out of it cancel it otherwise um, just continue continue and delete the rows so I've got this conditional test double check with them first if they're sure I then say no uh, these different buttons you can have yes no cancel abort retry all this stuff uh, they have an index value assigned to them uh, so if you're storing them in variables you may want to know that number uh, but otherwise when we're testing in code it's nice and easy we can literally just write VB no VBS VB cancel and it's easy for us rather than remembering what some kind of numeric value is okay let's close this down and give this the test macros ba, 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 delete old is the name of this macro and if I run that are you sure you want to delete these records over 500 days old uh, no I'm not and it will abort how if I was to run that macro it will go and do its thing and delete any records that are over 500 uh, days old in addition to adding messages and buttons you can also add icons to your MSG box so with the same example as before if I revisit the code now I've used the uh, line continuation character here to put the condition from before on two lines so we can see what we're going to do over the coming examples a little bit easier and where the part of the buttons is the buttons argument the VB yes no after that you can simply put a plus sign and you can add more than one option from this list so options such as VB critical and VB exclamation VB information and the one I want VB question are four different icons you can add so if I choose VB question and if we close this and run the macro in the same way that I have been doing there's the same message box but this time we have the question mark icon and there was also the option for exclamation 
uh, information and critical. But I've gone for the question mark one, completely optional, but it adds an extra icon to your message. Now, something else you can do is you can also add uh, what the default button should be. So you can see I've still got the message up from the previous example, and you may be able to make out the default response is button one, which is the yes button. So I'm asking the question, are you sure? You're about to delete records, please be sure. But the default is yes. So if you were to accidentally press the enter key twice or press a button, it's going to do yes. We want no to be the default. So let me come out of this, go back into the code, and after the buttons and the icon, I can even continue with another option where we have VB default button, one, two, three, or four, maximum four buttons. I want VB button two, so let me put that in there. And if we run this again, this time the no option will be the default option. Now hopefully you can see that it's not massively clear, but it's slightly darker around the edges. So you can see no would be the default if I was to press enter right now. It just aborts the macro.